good evening friends on behalf of topscorer.com i welcome you for the session for mathematics today as for ninth standard you know the syllabus has changed this year and there have been a lot of butterflies in the stomach like uh, what would be the paper pattern there are many queries related to mathematics moreover mathematics this year has branched out as part 1 and part 2 where we are having part 1 as algebra part 2 as geometry there would be many more questions in our mind related to mathematics so for that we topscorer.com has arranged a special session to help you out over here right so i jay shekhia on behalf of topscorer.com welcome you for the session after i complete a particular session you can definitely ask any query which you have in your mind you can type your queries and we'll see to that we revert back with respect to that particular right now uh, if you see for uh, just we'll have a quick uh, glance at the list of the chapters that we have for algebra for algebra we are having sets real numbers polynomials ratio and proportion linear equations in two variables financial planning and lastly statistics right your algebra paper is going to be for 40 marks right now we'll just have a quick uh, glance at the list of the chapters that we have for geometry throughout the year chapter number 1 basic concepts in geometry chapter number 2 parallel lines chapter number 3 triangles chapter number 4 construction of triangles chapter number 5 quadrilaterals chapter number 6 circle chapter number 7 coordinate geometry chapter number 8 trigonometry and lastly chapter number 9 surface area and volume so these are the chapters that we have studied throughout the year now from this academic year onwards for your final evaluation that i'm talking about is your final exam which is going to be there in the month of april at that time you have the entire textbook wherein eight marks will be from the portion of semester 1 okay need not worry it's again very very easy the paper pattern is again very easy to score so if you see for mathematics second semester i have uh, worked upon a special model activity sheet before we start with the time allotted to complete each paper be it algebra or geometry is going to be for 2 hours and total marks is going to be 40 okay now this is just one small note which will be given to you before the paper that is uh, solve all questions draw diagrams wherever necessary use of calculator is not allowed diagram is essential for writing the proof of the theorems this is particularly for geometry marks of construction should be distinct they should not be rubbed off and questions of 8 marks that is 20% are based on the first semester syllabus now you will find note points 1 2 and 5 in algebra paper 1 2 3 4 and 5 will be for your geometry okay now let's move ahead in understanding the paper pattern right because we'll be learning how to go ahead with the smart plan we'll understand the paper pattern and we'll understand how we can score better now question number 1 basically will have all one mark questions Question number two will have all two mark questions. Question number three will have all three mark questions. Question number four will have four mark questions. Lastly, question number five will have five mark questions. So here, the question number will decide the weightage of each question in that particular part. Like question number one A, the question is choose the proper alternative answer for the questions given below. you are they are going to ask you mcqs wherein they will be giving you five questions and four alternatives for each question you need to select the correct answer but the method how did you get that answer is not expected so in this question five multiple choice sub questions will be asked four alternatives for each sub question will be given only one of them will be correct write the letter of the correct alternative along with the answer against the question number now let's understand the time say for example the question from geometry 
How many midpoints does a segment have? The answer to this can be one, two, three, or many. You need to select the correct answer. The correct answer is one. So in your answer sheet, you should be answering one and then write the alphabet that is A. Am I very clear? Now, let's understand question number 1B. Same way, five MCQs would be asked in question number 1A. Let's understand B. The heading is perform any five of the following activities. Okay. Now, here in this question, six activities would be given to you, out of which you need to attempt any five, which each is going to be for one mark. They would be very simple. Various type of activities. Example, matching pairs, or it could be fill in the blanks, considering correlations, complete the table, etc. All such type of questions can be asked. We'll see an example from algebra as well as geometry. Let's look at this question. This is again from geometry. Line L is parallel to line M. And line L is the transversal. What is the value of A and B you need to write in the box? Obviously, A is going to be 110 because interior angles are supplementary. So you write your A 110. A and B are alternate angles. <coughs> so B will also be 110. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, question number two is perform any four of the following activities. So they are going to give you all together certain activities that will be six activities out of which you need to solve four. In this question, various type of activities like attempt questions based on the given figure, writing the number as asked, or fill in the blanks again, completing the web, okay, or table, etc. can come. Most of the activities are based on comprehension and application of the concept. It would be the direct application. In this question, six activities are given. You need to attempt any two, sorry, any four. Each would be for two marks. So total weightage will be eight marks. Now, see this example. Fill in the blanks in the following statement. Now, this is the question from the chapter ratio and proportion. You can see A upon 3 is equal to B upon 7 is equal to 4A upon box. You need to fill in the correct answer. It's clear 4 is multiplied with A. So 4 has to be multiplied with 3. So here you need to write as 12. Accordingly, you will solve this activity and complete the boxes. Clear? Now, question number 3 is again perform any three of the following activities. In this question, Five activities of three marks each will be given. You have to attempt any three. Now, since it's question number three, each question is going to be for three marks. So three into three, which is going to be nine marks. So the total weightage for question number three is going to be nine marks. Now, various type of activities such as construction of triangles. It could be observing the graph, filling the blanks, and even uh, proof can come in the form of filling the blanks. Only you need to write the correct answer. Now, let's understand this. Uh, the ratio of the two numbers is 5 to 7. 40 is added to each of the numbers. The ratio of the numbers, therefore, sorry, ratio of the sums, therefore, becomes you know, 25 is to 31. Find the numbers. Now, this is the question which I have read for you. You can see in the solution, a lot of things are written. And basically, you need to fill in the boxes and complete this activity. So a lot of guidelines with respect to the content is given to you. So it becomes all the more easy for you to solve the questions. So this time, the paper pattern is very, very simple for you to get maximum scores. Now remember, mathematics is one of the finest and the most promising subject to score. It assures you 100% score, provided you have written 100% content correct. Right? Now, uh, let's see one sum of geometry here, which is again proof based. Okay. Now fill in the blanks to write the proof that a rhombus is a parallelogram. Now you can see you're given is quadrilateral ABCDs. What is this? You need to understand this from the statement that rhombus is a parallelogram. So quadrilateral ABCD is, you will fill this blank with parallelogram. You have to prove that it is a parallelogram. So, for, sorry, uh, this is a rhombus. Quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus, and you need to prove quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. 
So then you write the proof accordingly, filling the correct reasons as well as the statements. Fine. So you can see a lot of things which initially you had to write now is given by the board and you need to just select certain things at proper places. If you're able to do that, you can get very good scores in algebra as well as geometry. Now perform any two of the following activities. Now certain things that we need to understand with respect to question number four. One, each question will be for four marks. Now in this question, three activities of four marks each will be given. You have to perform any two of them. In this question, write the interrelation, draw the graph, write the coordinates of the points of intersection, find the value, etc. Everything will be given. Activities may not be from the textbook. That is question number one, two, three. You will find a lot of uh, questions coming from the textbook. But when it comes to question number four, there are fair chances that you may have concept based questions. Concept in sense, whatever you have studied with your ninth standard curriculum, but the questions may not be in the textbook. There can be some questions based on the same concept, but from any other source. It may not be the textbook. Fine. Let's understand this. Now from, uh, from the equations as per the given instructions, write them in the boxes. Write A upon B is 5 upon 3. Then by alternando, it would be B upon A is equal to 3 upon 5. This way, you are given three more boxes to solve. So that would be all the more easier. Now look upon this question of geometry in triangle ABC. AB is 5 centimeter. AC is 9 centimeter. BC is 11 centimeter. X, Y, Z are midpoints of size AB, BC, AC respectively. Find the lengths of X, Y, Y, Z and X, Z. So accordingly, draw the figure, fill in these boxes. Accordingly, the marks would be distributed. Clear? So it's very, very easy when the entire paper is all the more activity based. Now, solve any one example from the following. Now, question number five will again carry all five mark questions. So each question will have a weightage of five marks. Two questions would be given out of which you need to attempt any one. Now in this question, I read this note specially for you. Two activities of five marks each will be given. You have to attempt any one out of this. The questions asked may be difficult. That is, it may be of odds category, that is high order thinking skills. Mostly the questions will not be from the textbook, but based on the syllabus. So either question number four or question number five. Either of these two questions may have questions which are not inside the text. It can be based on the text, but based on the syllabus rather, but not from the textbook. Okay. Now, Lalit's uh, mother gave him some 10 rupee notes and some 5 rupee notes amounting to rupees 190. Lalit said, if mother had interchanged the notes given to me, I would have 180 with me. Find the number of 10 rupee notes and 5 rupee notes given to Lalit by his mother. Now, this is the question from algebra. This is just an understanding. This is again the sum which is not there in the textbook. Now, for geometry, the radius at the broadest end of the corn cob, shaped like a cone, is 2.1 centimeter and its length is 20 centimeter. If 1 centimeter square of the surface of the cob carries 4 grains, how many grains would be there in the entire cob? Now this is the question which is again non-textual but based on the syllabus. So such type of questions can come for your exam. Right? Now, these, this is the entire paper pattern. If you see entire paper pattern is very very simple, more activity oriented. So moreover the sums, the guidelines, everything is given in the question paper. Only you need to have proper understanding and fill in the boxes. So that will help you to score and perform better. Right. So I hope you understand, understood the entire uh, paper pattern. Now, if you have any queries, please be very comfortable to post anything related to algebra and geometry where you feel stuck. This forum is specially for you. You can ask the questions, whatever you want to. We'll see to that. We give you the remedy. Right.
So please ask the questions. You are encouraged to ask the questions. I'm waiting for your questions. I hope there's no question here. In geometry, particularly if you find ninth standard, it's the first year where you start learning how to write the proof. And I've seen many students, they come up with a query, okay, how to work with a proof based question. We at times find difficult to write the proof. First and foremost, I would recommend strictly not to memorize the proof. You need to understand the logical flow, how to prove. The logical flow once understood, Second step that you need to understand is the sequence of steps that you need to show the logical flow. Once you understand that and you practice on that basis with each logical step, you understand the steps that you need to present and you practice the sums on a regular basis. I hope proof based sums will also become very, very easy for you to work with it. Right? So I strongly suggest that mathematics should be practiced daily, daily for half an hour. And trust me, you will start enjoying the subject. It appeals to the logic. You will enjoy it more. So, but it should be daily on a consistent basis, daily for at least half an hour. I strongly advise you should be working with mathematics. Fine. I'm waiting for your queries. This uh, session is especially for you. So I thank you all for being a part of this forum. On behalf of Top Scorer and Jay Shetia, I thank you all. All the best.